This is the new Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. And in this video, we're going to find out if it's the perfect Porsche for going dogging. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. If it's the perfect Porsche for going dog walking. It's a practical estate. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through all the changes Porsche has recently made to this car. I'm going to take it for a drive, show you around the outside and the inside, and of course, launch it. I'm Mark Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's talk about the design of the Panamera Sport Turismo. So I think it's a good looking car. I really like the back end of it. One of the changes Porsche has made here is this light bar. It goes all the way across the back. You used to have a split in it, but not anymore. It's one piece. That's nicer. You've also got some new tailpipes. Did you spot those? <laughs> I didn't. Now you get quad tailpipes on most versions, but entry-level cars have twin tailpipes. Let's move down the side. So Porsche has given the car some new alloy wheel designs. They start at 19s, rising up to 21s, which is what these are. I think 19s could be a little bit underwheeled. There's also some new paint schemes. I'm not sure if this is one of them, this burgundy. I wouldn't have a car in burgundy. It's a bit old manny. Especially when you've got the chrome surrounding the windows like that. Though on certain models, you get that in gloss black, which is a little bit more sporty. These air breathers are in gloss black though, and they do actually breathe air. They're not fake. Porsche doesn't tend to fit fake vents on its cars, which is a good thing. Now here at the front, changes include new headlight designs, new low bumper design. Hard really to tell the difference unless you're a real Porsche anorak. Good looking car, but I personally prefer the look of an Audi RS6 if you're on a high performance estate. But what do you think? I'll put a pinned comment below this video. Let me know which you think looks the best, Audi RS6 or the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. Let's go see what it's like inside. If I'm being honest, I do prefer the interior of the Panamera than the RS6 ever so slightly. It just feels a bit more sporty, especially where you have this center console that separates you and you sit nice and low. Dash design is really cool as well. And one of the key updates for the car is you've got new inlays and a new designer steering wheel and it's a lovely lovely steering wheel and the driving position is excellent in here so lower spec cars have manual adjustment for the steering wheel high spec cars get electrical adjustment you can get the seats nice and low the entry level model gets eight-way adjustable seats and they go all the way up to 18-way adjustable depending on which version you go for the entry level car also has partial leather interior whereas the rest of them such as this one has the full leather so it's leathery leather dead cow everywhere infotainment system on this car looks really good it's generally pretty responsive and you can just whip through the different menus by pressing these buttons on the side they can be a little bit fiddly when you're driving to get into some of the sub menus thankfully they still maintain physical controls for the climate so you can just use these buttons here to change the temperature but there are some other touch sensitive buttons here which actually click and vibrate a bit like your mobile phone does when you press them so it does make it easy to tell that you've actually pressed it if you're driving and don't want to look down i really like this as well the way you have an analog tachometer but the rest of the dials are digital and you can cycle through different menus and stuff like that and get the sat nav up in there as well really really nice another thing that's nice is just the general build quality it's so solid in porsches they feel as expensive as they actually are Another new thing on this car is the fact that you now get USB-C inputs, not the old USB, and wireless charging. It's still got a 12-watt socket there if you want to do it a little bit old school. Practicality actually is all right, so the glove box is a decent size. There's a little bit of extra storage here. I don't want you to put in there. And you have decent sized cup holders here. That one's a bit smaller, but it's perfect size for a can, and the door bins are big as well. That's all nice. Let's move in the back, see how practical it is there. Oh, before we do that, I just want to show you these. Oh, proper solid metal paddle shifters. Anyway, into the back. So, there's a decent amount of room back here. Knee room's good. Headroom's pretty decent as well, and this has the glass roof, which does eat into headspace a bit, but I'm fine. I think people over six foot will be fine as well. The only problem is this, big centre console. So if you need to carry someone in the middle, there is a seatbelt for them. <laughs> it's not much fun. They have to do quite a bit of legs akimbo. Look, that's not great. And then you end up just like bashing your legs on this hard centre console. It is not good. The footwells aren't the largest either, so you will be competing for foot space and no one wants to play foot wars do they for a long trip down here you've got this little bit of space which is good for nothing you have the control for the rear sun blind and there's three usb-c ports there so everyone in the back here can charge their mobile devices if you need to carry longer items rather than a person in the middle look you can just where is it there it is 
you just fold this down. It's not the widest gap, but it will allow you to carry some skis through there. I think the people who buy these kind of cars probably go skiing as well, don't they? A couple of other things I want to show you is this. There's some tie down points here. Is that for tying down your rear passengers if you've got really naughty kids? That feels expensive actually, as does the rest of the rear of this car. It's very, very nice. Door bins, they're a little bit on the small side. Look, that's an average size bottle, and here in the back, that ain't fitting. But on the flip side, the rear windows go all the way down. Oh yeah, I like that. You don't get that that often these days. Anyway, let's check out the boot. It's an estate car, that's what it's all about. So. You get an automated tailgate, which is what you expect really on a car at this price. Now the boot looks nice and square. It's okay to load. It's a bit of a load lip, so it doesn't really matter when you're loading suitcases. What it might be a bit annoying for is if you've got an old flabby dog, because it might struggle to just get over that bit. I'll illustrate now. I don't have a dog, so I'm going to use a crew member. So can you just illustrate how it might be awkward getting over here? Look, go on in, boy. There you go, in. get in. That's a good boy. Now sit up. Good, good boy, good boy. Kiss the ball, kiss the ball. I'll give you this. <laughs> okay, go on, you can go now. I think that's the point illustrated. Not too happy about that. Anyway, in terms of the space, 515 litres, which is all right, but the capacity on an Audi RS6 is 565 litres. In this, you can only fit five of these. In the RS6, seven. Now, if you actually want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi RS6, Click on the little pop-out banner up there, it should just be popping out. If you can't see it, there is a link below the video. It's not all bad here though, look, because there is quite a bit of functionality. You've got tie-down points here, you've got your 12 volt socket there for putting your vacuum cleaner in. This car actually has a 230 volt socket there, although it's the European plug adapter. I'm sure you can get a UK plug adapter, at least I hope you can. Now it might seem a bit annoying, you have to lean in to lower the seat backs but you don't, because just here, hidden away, there's an electric release. Go on, go down, go down in one go. Go on, go, go down. Oh, easy does it. And then you've got a pretty much flat floor. There is a bit of a gap in between the seat and the boot area, but look, you can still slide things nicely to the front. There is something annoying though. If you want to put the seats back up, they're really quite heavy <laughs> and spring loaded. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. I hate the way Porsches have this weird paddle on certain cars to start it. Not so long ago, you used to get the key and put it in there, then use that to start the car, but not anymore. They don't like to change things drastically. Now, I've said this a lot in other Porsche videos, and I'm going to keep on saying it until Porsche finally get rid of this stupid design. This is quite an expensive car, so you'd think they'd be able to spend a little bit of extra cash to get a cover over the cup holders. It means that if you fold this down and use it as an armrest, your arm ends up in there and it's not comfortable. You have 100 litres less boot capacity on the hybrid versions of these cars because underneath here, instead of some extra storage, there's the batteries. Oh, and look, if you want to carry a cable about, that takes up quite a bit of room as well. All that electrical stuff also means that the e-hybrid models are quite heavy. For instance, the Turbo S e-hybrid weighs in at over 2.4 tonnes. Oh, it's a triple one. While this car comes with Apple CarPlay, there is no Android Auto, which is a bit annoying for me. Speaking of which, should I upgrade my Galaxy S20 Ultra for the Galaxy S21 Ultra, or should I just bite the bullet and get a goddamn iPhone? It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. I really love how there's a little extra roof spoiler built into the roof spoiler for an added bit of downforce and extra stability. And it goes away neatly again when you don't need that. Retractable load covers in estate cars can be a real arse to remove. But this one's so nicely engineered. It's got a little handle on it, look. You just pull it up, release, and you're good to go. All but the entry level Panamera Sport Turismo come with air suspension as standard and you can alter the height so you can lower it so it look badass or you can lift it if you're having to drive over some really crappy roads or big speed humps. 
The standard stereo on this car has 10 speakers and 150 watts, which is adequate, but you can upgrade to this Bose sound system, which has 710 watts and 14 speakers. But really, for the full experience, you can pay £4,000 for the Burmester surround system, which has 22 speakers and 1,455 watts. Porsche's increased the size of the battery packs on the e-hybrid models to 18 kilowatt hours, which is four kilowatt hours more than before. The result is that this car can drive on electric power alone up to 31 miles, apparently. The emissions are really low as well if you use the plug-in hybrid system properly. It's rated at 55 grams per kilometer of carbon dioxide. And that's really good if you're a company car buy because you can save a lot of cash if you have one of these because the benefit in kind for a year will be the same as on a two litre diesel Audi A6 Avant. Before we drive this car, let's talk about the engines. So, the entry-level Panamera 4 has a 2.9-litre twin-turbo V6 with 330 horsepower. Then there's the 4S, which has the same engine. Now, you can get both those cars as a plug-in hybrid, the E-hybrid, and that system adds an extra 120 horsepower to the performance. Then there's the GTS model. It has a 4-litre twin-turbo V8 with 480 horsepower. Then there's the Turbo S, which has the similar engine, but with 630 horsepower. Down at the top of the range is the plug-in e-hybrid version of the Turbo S, which has a combined output from its electric motor and its petrol engine of 700 horsepower. Now, all models have all-wheel drive and an eight-speed automatic gearbox. All right, let's see what this Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo is like to drive. One of the key things you notice about it is its sheer size. It's very wide, especially when you're driving down narrow country roads. Oh no, and now I need to go round a man. Hope a car doesn't come the other way, otherwise it's gonna be carnage. You sit really low as well, which is great for that sporty drive experience, but for figuring out where the corners of the car are, not so good. You might find yourself just like raising it up because the bonnet is quite large on this thing. It does a blind spot. That is quite a blind spot, but generally the visibility is all right. So the back window is just of average size. If you want to go a bit quicker, this thing just absolutely flies and it grips to the road really, really well. And the steering's sharp. It's not exactly a fun car. It's more just capable. It just smashes along roads. And you've got lots of grip from the four-wheel drive system, which is great. It is fast. It is capable. Is it comfy? Well, it is when you're going quickly. The air suspension does deal with bumps and undulations really well, but as you come into town, you slow down and you hit bumps in the road, you drive over cat's eyes and potholes or go over speed humps. It does seem to struggle just a little bit. You do feel some of the harder edges in the road surface. So it's not the most relaxing when you're going dead slowly. The gearbox is generally very good at just shifting gears together. You do notice sometimes a bit of a transition when you put your foot down and you want to accelerate and there's the whole working out what to do between the petrol engine and the electric motors. There can sometimes be a bit of a delay, but most of the time it figures it out. And if you want to, you can actually just drive around in town just on electric power alone. And it's really serene, quiet and relaxing, which is good. What's not so good though is when you get out of town and start going really quickly on the motorway because this car has huge tyres. They do kick up quite a lot of road noise, which can be annoying. Other than that, it's quite it's well insulated for wind noise. One thing you can get this car with is rear wheel steering. And if you're going to be doing lots of manoeuvring like this in tight spaces, you're going to want it because it does reduce the car's turning circle. Can I make this round here without getting into a pickle? Oh, yep, I can, just about. That's good. I do find it more relaxing to drive than something like an AMG E63. And I don't think it's really any more relaxing than the Audi RS6. Performance wise, well, if you've got the top of the range turbo SE hybrid, a little bit faster on acceleration than the RS6, but what about this 4SE hybrid? Shall we find out? Right, I've got my specialist timing gear up here. I'm gonna launch it. Let's go. Oh, struggling for grip. Whoa, it is slippery though. What are we going to do? Oh, not 16, 4.2 seconds. Woohoo! That's pretty quick, that is really. And it was just struggling for traction. Now, if you'd like to see how quick the normal Panamera in turbo with no hybrid does not 60, put a link up there, click on that, you can go see.
So then, what's my final verdict on the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Panamera Sport Turismo. It's a really good car. It's just not the most practical performance estate. I'll get this instead. <laughs> yep. Just saying. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know if any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the Car Wow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.